Today I'm gonna share with you how I went from this to this and whether or not it was worth it. When I was in college and I was writing a lot of code every day for my classes and for building side projects, I realized that I was typing on my keyboard a lot. So I started to think about how I could make that experience a little more enjoyable, interesting, and fun. Mechanical keyboards were the answer. Buying my first mechanical keyboard would eventually lead me to building the split keyboard I now use to write code every day. That first mechanical keyboard I bought is actually the one you saw me throwing around earlier. It's this 60% mechanical keyboard that has Cherry MX Brown switches. When I first started using this mechanical keyboard, it actually felt pretty weird at first. It's a pretty different experience when you're typing on a mechanical keyboard for the first time. But after a while, I got used to it and I started to really enjoy it. Fast forward about a year and I was again thinking about how I could make the typing experience even better. When I found out that you could actually split your keyboard in half, I had to try that out. The concept of being able to place your hands in a much more natural position to type was really intriguing to me, so I started doing some research. There are some really cool options for split mechanical keyboards online, like the Ergodox Easy or the Moonlander, but I thought that building my own would be a really cool project to make. I found an option online called an Iris Rev 4. It seemed just about right for me, not too complicated to build as a beginner, and most of the parts were on a website called Keeb.io. They aren't sponsoring this video, by the way. All in all, to build out the keyboard, I ordered 60 clear Cherry MX Brown switches, 100 tiny blue LEDs to install inside the switches, a soldering kit from Amazon, two PCB boards, which are essentially the brains of the keyboard for the two different sides. Building out the keyboard mostly consists of soldering the switches to these PCB boards so that whenever you press on a switch, the PCB board can know and can then notify the computer what key is being pressed. Additionally, for aesthetics, I also had to install the blue LEDs inside the switches and solder them to the boards so that whenever the keyboard is plugged into a computer, the LEDs can light up. For keys that are a bit larger, like the spacebar, you also have to get what is known as a stabilizer. Finally, the rest of the parts basically consisted of four plates you would place above and below the PCB board to protect it, and an acrylic middle layer to protect the sides. I also had to get a set of keycaps to install onto the switches and actually type on. I ordered a pretty high quality set from drop.com also not sponsoring this video. Once the keyboard was actually built, I was really excited to start using it, but it was really rough at first. Curiously, because I already knew how to touch type, the fact that the keyboard was split in half wasn't really the primary reason that it was really tough to learn how to use the, this keyboard in the beginning. Before you can actually use the keyboard, you have to program it first with a firmware called QMK. Basically, you have to decide which key will mean what, and this firmware allows you to do that. I programmed mine so that I would have two layers. First layer would be a pretty normal traditional layout for the keys. What happens with the second layer is that I decided that whenever you hold a key labeled on my keyboard, LWR, the whole layout of the keyboard changes to symbols and numbers. It's kind of like a custom shift key and you decide what the layout for the keys will be whenever that uh, custom shift key is pressed. I designed this layout to be only symbols and numbers because it's so common to type these out when you're writing code. The problem was that I was gonna need to memorize this whole new custom layout I made and that was gonna take some time. On top of that, this keyboard has an ortho linear layout and that makes time typing really weird at first. Traditional keyboards usually come in a staggered layout. The keys aren't organized in a straight vertical column, they're more of on a diagonal, so that's why it's called staggered. In contrast, an ortholinear layout organizes the keys into straight vertical columns to make for a better and more natural typing experience. But because we've been used to using staggered layouts since the times of the typewriter, switching to an ortholinear keyboard can be pretty challenging. Once I figured it out though, this is one of the things I enjoy the most about my split keyboard. I practiced a lot on websites like typing.io, and I would also force myself to use the split keyboard as much as I could. All in all, it took me about two to three months to figure this stuff out and start feeling more comfortable. Eventually, I've come to really love using this keyboard, and there's several reasons for that. The first reason is that it's really nice to be able to put my wrist in a much more natural and neutral position to type. To do this, I usually place the two sides on a slight angle looking inward. 
keyboard. The second reason is that I like having the option of putting something between the two keyboard sides. I usually put my trackpad between them. The third reason is the ortholinear layout. I think it's a game changer. It makes typing a much more enjoyable experience. The fourth is that I really like I can custom program the keyboard so that the keys do exactly what I want them to do, program layers, and be able to be as efficient as possible when I'm typing. Finally, having several dedicated keys for your thumbs I think is a game changer. Normally on a traditional keyboard, you can only use your thumbs for the spacebar. On this keyboard, I use my right thumb to hit both the spacebar and the backspace keys, and my left thumb to hit the enter key, the command key, and also the LWR key, which I've programmed to change the whole layout to symbols and numbers when you keep it pressed. To add to all of this, I write my code in the Vim text editor where you can only use your keyboard and you can't use your mouse. So having a keyboard that optimizes for this experience and makes it more efficient and enjoyable has been great. There are some downsides though. The first is that I think this keyboard isn't very portable or compact. It's not the best for traveling. The second is that I wish it had Bluetooth. And the third is that I don't like I have to deal with two different uh, cables. So you have the aux cable to connect the two sides together and then a USB-C cable to connect the uh, keyboard to the computer. So if you're wondering if you should get a split keyboard for yourself, I think it's a great tool to learn how to use but do know that it can take some time and effort to get used to, and it does have a learning curve. If you don't wanna build one yourself, there's some good options with the Ergonox Easy and the Moonlander, and Keep.io is actually now selling a pre-built option for the Iris Rev 4, which is the keyboard I just uh, talked about in this video. You can also get something like a Digma Raise, which is a split keyboard that isn't ortholinear, that will significantly reduce the learning curve but I do think that learning how to use an ortholinear layout is worth it in the long run, and it's one of the things I like the most about my keyboard. All right guys, so that's pretty much it for my experience switching over to a split mechanical keyboard and what that experience has been like for me. All in all, it has been a fun, challenging, and rewarding experience that has made my coding workflow a bit more ergonomic, fun, and enjoyable. Thanks so much for watching, you guys. Don't forget to leave a like if you enjoyed the video, subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with more content like this, and leave a comment down below if you have any questions for me or recommendations on what you want to see next. See you guys in the next one. Peace.